Part two on Proformas, we're now going to actually build an Excel Proforma with links between our balance sheet, income statement, our cash flow statement. Um, we're going to calculate 2012 figures based on links and factors that we have. Um, our factors are going to appear in the blue cells and our formulas are going to be in the yellow cells. We want to build a pro forma with sales forecast to grow at 25%, but first let's use a 10% rate and assume that so we can compare it to the exercise we did in the classroom. So again, on our balance sheet, we're going to put in formulas for the yellow cells and we're going to put in factors for the bluish cells. Same thing is going to be true in our income statement. We also have a cash flow statement that will calculate automatically and we have some ratios that will calculate automatically and we'll discuss those later on. So let's begin with our income statement. And again, we're told that our sales are going to increase by 10%. So we would expect then cost of goods sold to increase by 10%, our selling and admin expenses to increase by 10%. Our interest expense won't increase by 10%, but recall our interest rate was 10%. Um, our tax expense or tax rate was 30%, and we have a 40% dividend payout ratio. Let's go ahead and start working on our income statement. Our sales will simply be our prior year times 1 plus our growth rate, or in terms of an Excel formula, equals B6 times 1 plus uh, cell D6, where our growth rate factor was. For uh, cost of goods sold, we'll take equals prior year sales multiplied by the quantity 1 plus our 10% growth rate. Okay, Gross profit then is sales minus cost of goods sold. Again, we're assuming our selling uh, general administrative expenses would also go up by 10% equals prior year times the quantity 1 plus, again we had a 10% growth rate, enter. Our interest expense doesn't go up as a percentage of sales, but rather we call it's linked to debt. So equals our 10% interest rate multiplied by, let's click on our balance sheet, we don't have a number there yet, but our debt is going to be in cell C18. So hit enter. Income before taxes then will be our gross profit, minus selling and administrative, minus our interest expense. Our tax expense will be equal to our income before taxes, multiplied by our 30% tax rate. Our net income then is our taxable income, minus our tax expense. And dividends, we have a 40% payout ratio. So net income times 40%. There we've got it. Let's move over to our balance sheet. We've got a formula already set up for cash. And again, that's simply our prior year times 1 plus our growth rate. Our accounts receivable. Again, if sales go up by 10%, we'll expect all of our assets to go up by 10%. Um, our accounts payable. Again, that's to purchase inventory and other items on credit. We would also expect a similar 10% increase. Accrued wages at 10%. Debt, that's our plug. No percentage increase there. Common stock, we don't have a factor because that's what simply equal to last year's balance. Now, we could assume an increase in common stock. We wanted to issue common stock, but at this point, we aren't going to issue any new common stock. And then retained earnings, it's simply prior year's retained earnings plus net income minus dividends. So let's go ahead and build our pro forma equals prior year times the quantity 1 plus our 10% growth rate. Inventories equal prior years times the quantity 1 plus our growth rate. We can sum up our total asset current assets. Net plant equipment prior year times quantity, 1 plus our growth rate. Total assets will be our net plant and equipment plus our current assets. Accounts payable, prior year times the quantity, 1 plus our growth rate. Accrued expenses, prior year times the quantity, 1 plus our growth rate. Current liabilities will be our crude wages plus our accounts payable. Let's skip over long-term debt. Our total liabilities will be long-term debt, which we don't have, 
plus our current liabilities. Common stock, we're just going to link it to last year. Again, we could assume we had some issue, but we aren't. Retained earnings will be equal to prior year retained earnings plus, click on your income statement tab, click on net income, minus, click on dividends, and then hit enter. Total shareholders equity will be our 539 retained earnings plus our $100 in common stock. And finally, total liabilities and equity will be our 639 in equity plus our total liabilities, which again, we haven't fully calculated yet. And as a last step, we will do our plug to debt. Again, that's total assets minus total equity minus our other liabilities. So equals assets minus total equity minus our current liabilities and our balance sheet balances. And our income statement is tied directly to our balance sheet. And this should be pretty close to the numbers we had on our pro forma we did in class. Now, on our instructions tab, we were told to build a pro forma if sales are forecast to grow at 25%. First, we used 10%. And it's good to use that because we had something to check our work to. But let's go to our income statement and change our sales growth to 25%. Our sales increased, but notice we had no change in cost of goods sold, no change in selling admin. We had no changes in our balance sheet other than this cell right here for cash because we had linked that to our sales growth sale, D6, on our income statement. So really what we want to do is we want to link all of our cells to cell D6. Boom. Equal cell D6. Now our income statement fully changes. Again, don't change your interest rate because that was 10%. It's not a percentage of sales. Our tax rate's 30%, not linked to above. Same thing with our payout ratio. Let's go to our balance sheet. Again, notice with this one, we've actually anchored that cell to income statement D6 with dollar signs. So we can just copy that down. Now I can copy. Control C is copy. Control V is paste. Control V, paste, Control V, paste. Now I have a pro forma that will change with any given level of sales. 50% increase in sales, we would expect cost of goods sold to go up by 50%. Items on our balance sheet go up. Our balance sheet still balances. Our long term debt, 1629. Income statement, 10% of that. Sure enough, $163. Everything ties in. As a next step, I want you to build a data table. I want to investigate what happens to um, our operating, investing, and financing cash flows and our financial leverage as sales growth increases. To create a data table, you can look at these instructions here, but we need to consider some inputs. We're going to want to consider, in our case, uh, six different levels of sales growth and we're going to want to pick up values for our operating cash flows. Notice this is linked to cell B11. That's right there on our cash flow statement. Um, investing cash flows is in cell uh, B14, and then we've got financing in B20. And sure enough, this is linked to B14, B20, and our leverage is linked to our asset to equity ratio over on our ratio page, cell C8. So there's our asset to equity ratio. So let's go ahead and build a data table. Again, the output variables we are interested in need to be at the top row of our table. And the various levels for our input will be on the left-hand side of our table. Now we're going to highlight the cells that include both the top row and our columns on the left. Then we'll go up to our top menu, data. And we want to perform a what-if analysis and data tables. We have set up our table in the form of a column. We want to take the inputs that are in this column and we want to put them right in there for our sales growth factor in cell D6. And poof, there's our table. One of the first things we notice that as sales growth goes up, our cash financing cash needs increase. At low levels of sales, we can finance all of our growth internally. In fact, we've got excess cash. But as sales growth goes up, not surprisingly, as we exceed our sustainable growth rate, 
we have to increase our financial leverage. Let's go ahead and just take a quick look and see if we can get to somewhere or near that sustainable growth rate. Let's look at our ratio page. Our return on equity is 32 percent. Our payout ratio was 40 percent, which means we are keeping 60 percent of our earnings. So if we take our ROE and multiply it by 0.6, our retention ratio, we get a uh, sustainable growth rate, internal growth rate, of roughly 19.4 percent. Now I just approximated it. I didn't divide by the 1 minus ROE. We certainly could. We could take that. I guess if we wanted to get a slightly more precise value, we could take that, divide it by the quantity 1 minus ROE times, and it was B. So our sustainable growth rate is around 24%. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happens to our cash flow statement when we have a growth rate of around 24%. Now, I want to take a look at our cash flow statement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my cash flow statement, and I'm going to put in a 24% factor right up top. Well, I can't because my worksheet's protected. Let me go ahead and unprotect my worksheet. Now let's go ahead and put in a 24% growth rate. And I'm going to link my income statement, that factor, that cell right there, to my cash flow statement. Now let's look at our cash flows. At a 24% growth rate, we still have some financing cash flows. We have to borrow some long-term debt. But let's see what happened to our debt-to-equity ratio, our asset-to-equity ratio. Um, currently, our asset-to-equity ratio was, uh, where is it right here, asset-to-equity ratio 3.8. Let's link up to this cell, the 3.9, and see what happens. So our asset-to-equity ratio equals 3.9 and again currently it's at 3.8 so as we would expect we can grow at roughly a 24 percent growth rate without increasing our asset to equity ratio without increasing our financial leverage if we want to grow faster than that our financial leverage will go up if we grow slower than that our sustainable growth rate let's go even slower our financial leverage goes down. Now this won't tie exactly into the sustainable growth rates we calculated in the chapter because we don't have everything increasing as a direct percentage of sales. Okay, We've got some items, again, taxes weren't increasing as a direct percentage of sales, our interest expense isn't uh, increasing as a direct percentage of sales, but the likelihood that everything will change as a direct percentage of sales is slim to numb, but it gives us something to think about. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our internal sustainable growth rate was. And again, that's where we have no new debt. And that was based on our ROA. So our return on assets, instead of being 28%, it's 7.5%. So let's come on over here, 7.5%. Um, again, let's do our, our sustainable rate. Internal would have been equal to our prior years. 0 0.074 times our retention ratio of 0 0.6. We should be able to grow at about a 4 or 5% growth rate without taking on any new debt whatsoever. So let's try 5%. And we have what? A slight decrease in long term debt 5.5%. Uh, or let's just go with 6% we've got basically no long-term debt. So around that 4, 5, or 6% internal sustainable growth rate, we have no increase in long-term debt, but we do have a decrease in financial leverage. At growth rates closer to that external sustainable growth rate, which I think we calculated was around 24%, we have more long-term debt, but we maintain a constant debt to equity ratio. So again, one of our big takeaways here is that increasing growth requires additional financing cash flows. Okay, And so that's an important message. Firms can grow, 
but they need financial resources to grow. Low levels of growth, we can finance them internally. Higher levels of sales growth, we need to finance them externally.